Enough suspense. That should do it. I got to keep you guys honest. No fancy intro this week. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out how I want to reshoot it and uh, figure it out. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm brainstorming um, as to, to how to best piece together a new intro because the uh, Butters from South Park song, the Something in My Friend Pocket, I enjoy it, but I got a fair number of people saying that uh, it was annoying, quote unquote, <laughs> after uh, repeatedly hearing it. And a lot of people actually tend to binge watch these. They come to the channel, they see one, they really like it, and then they watch like 30 in a row. And it's it's something that they enjoy. And uh, I guess it's impossible because this is episode 20. But um, yeah, they watch a bunch in a row and having to watch the intro over and over again, it's kind of annoying. Plus, you have to ask yourself, what's the purpose of an intro? Like, it, with podcasts especially, most people know what they're watching. And an intro usually serves to introduce somebody to the content, but it gets to the point where it's just a waste of the viewer's time because you're just wasting five seconds here and there a thousand times over with all your videos. And so I, maybe I don't even need one. Maybe we'll do this like Joe Rogan style and just get into it, which I kind of prefer because I'm, I'm lazy. Maybe that's lazy. Maybe that's not lazy. I don't know. To just start talking and get right into it. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. I feel kind of weird today. A little bit like I'm car sick, but I'm actually just sitting in a chair, staring at a webcam, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm drinking some sweet tea. Uh, it's very, very delicious, but we're gonna go on. PEM Dynamite says, I love that annoying song. Yeah, most people do. <laughs> it's just, it's that something in my front pocket for you. Why don't you reach up to my pocket and see what it is? It's talking about a butterscotch candy, but it sounds like he's singing about something else. It's just, it makes you smile. It makes you smile. But um, in terms of utility, intros tend to have a, a very little or very small uh, utility, but nonetheless, they are entertaining and uh, allow some consistency. My problem is not branding, though. Most people hear Lukey Poo and they're like, "Oh, it's that guy that creates crap content." You see what I did there? Um, so uh, branding isn't a real issue for me. But we're gonna uh, have a a lot of fun. Um, we're gonna talk about a lot of things today, as you can tell from the title. We are talking about uh, bias in reviews to begin with, and this is something that actually struck me earlier today that I haven't heard anybody else address. So maybe other people have been talking about this the whole time and I've missed it, but we're going to address it. I'll get it out there and we can just figure it out. Um, then we're also going to talk about the channel a little bit, uh, about uh, my review policy and how I approach reviews and will approach them in the future. And then also we're going to talk about some upcoming games, specifically Red Dead Redemption 2 and the upcoming Assassin's Creed game, all of which I'm super pumped for. So hopefully you can have uh, um, some fun with us today. Also, before we jump right into it, whether you're watching this after this sh uh, show has gone live, you're watching this recorded on YouTube, or perhaps you are actually watching live right now. Hello, everyone. Um, then uh, what I want you to do is to make sure that you're checking me out. I, I can post a link to the Discord again in the chat, and it'll be in the description of the video after. And you can uh, join up there. And, uh, you know, we have a great time. We talk about stuff. I do uh, a lot of live streams as well over on Twitch. And if you're subscribed on YouTube and not on Twitch and not following me on Twitch, then that's a great way to uh, uh, be notified because I always post it there. Plus, we have a great time. So, but enough said with that. Let's just get right into it. So for those of you not familiar, we're going to pull this up. We're going to go full screen over here. We're getting fancy. Uh Prey was reviewed over on IGN, and typically these sites like IGN and GameSpot, if you follow me on Twitter, then I talked about this earlier today, uh, they tend to be very light on these games, like very, very light to the point where it's almost a joke, where they give like Battlefield or Black Ops rather a 9.3 and they gave The Witcher 3 like a 9.4 and they're like equally awesome games and the, the standard seems to be a little off. And it's always been like, well, 
they're just bought and paid for and they're paid for and they give them some money like hey uh, please be nice to us or review our game kindly and generously give us extra points and we uh will be good to you and we'll give you more money and that's to some extent true but everyone's always said that they've always said ign reviews are bought and paid for GameSpot reviews are bought and paid for which is why you need the smaller youtubers um and by smaller YouTubers, the people saying it usually are in the hundreds of thousands of subscribers. They're getting sent free copies of the game, review codes from these companies. And it's a, a real issue. And I'll talk about why I think so. Now, to set this up, it's important to remember that Prey is published by Bethesda Softworks and ZeniMax Entertainment. Now, Bethesda Softworks is the parent company of uh, Arcane Studios. They also own Bethesda Game Studios, makers of Fallout 4, Fallout 3, um, and uh, Skyrim, and all those games. And so they're the parent company. Now, Bethesda Softworks changed their review policy uh, probably six months ago, six months to a year ago. It's right before the Dishonored 2 release, whenever that was. I think it was the end of last year. They changed their review policy so that they would only send out review codes a day before the game launched. And I put out a video saying Bethesda just did something incredibly stupid. I made a video on it, which did fairly well, like maybe 80,000 views. I'm not sure. I haven't checked it in a while. But uh, I, I was talking about this and I said it was so stupid because what do they possibly gain from this? Do they really need an extra few days or week of development time? Is that how crammed they are that they can't send out a copy of the game a week before release? Why are they doing this? This is a conscious choice to do it. Now, Bethesda's excuse was by they basically just said, well, we wanted to make sure that the reviewers and the players, I'm not joking, all enjoy the games that we release at the same time. That's their excuse for uh, saying this, for, for changing their review policy to a day before launch. To say that they wanted people to enjoy the games at the same time. This is something that they actually said. Clearly, that's complete BS. There's no reason to think that that's true. So you have to ask, why are they doing it? And typically, as we saw with Dishonored 2, it was because the PC port was horrendous. And games were crashing. It was horrible. There was no way of keeping up with it. And uh, it was it was really, really tough. It was really tough to review that game. I bought it and I actually had to return it within the two hours on Steam because it was so busted. Um, it was crash. It was just terrible. Now, um, as a result of this, you have to understand how these companies are getting bought and paid for. I know this is really elaborate, but what I'm saying is how these companies are being bought and paid for is with access, with early access. With reviews, it's all about who gets the review out first and with the most detail, basically. And that's why these reviewers are always looking for early access. They want the game a week before release. And then the embargo or the limitation on when you can first talk about the game it's all lifted at the same time. The way Bethesda does it is they send out review codes a day before release and then they just say whenever you finish the game, whatever. Now, what this inevitably leads to is reviewers rushing through the game, trying to finish it as soon as possible, or maybe in some cases not even finishing the, the game entirely. I think it was Polygon, hilariously so, because they are one of the worst gaming publications in existence. They actually went and published a Neo review before they had finished the game because it was too hard. <laughs> and then when everyone was like, are you kidding me? You didn't finish the game and you're putting out a review? They uh, took it out down and said, we'll delay our review because <laughs> our, our reviewer is having trouble with it. Um, so what happened is the payment for these companies is pretty straightforward. It's early access. IGN is always getting exclusive early coverage of these games. Uh, they, they get access like, hey, we're going to let you get access to the game uh, two weeks early or you're going to get exclusive coverage at E3 of one of our upcoming games. It's always these kind of deals that are public 
that you see in videos, but aren't explicitly stated or discussed. And that's what IGN is trafficking in. Same with Game uh, Spot. same with a lot of big reviewers on YouTube, even independent ones that aren't necessarily directly affiliated with a uh, company like IGN, which is why you have to be careful because a lot of YouTubers will lie to you about this, where they say, well, no, I'm independent. I, I'm not, I don't owe anything to these companies. They're not paying me off. Ubisoft EA, they're not paying me off to make this review good. And that's kind of true, but they are paying them off in early access, which if they get to release a review at the same time as IGN, they're brought up to the same level as IGN. That's in a way paying them off with access, with that exclusive coverage, um, which helps their channel, which increases uh, the, the quality of their livelihood. They'll make more money. They'll get more views. And so in a way, they do owe something to them because they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to tick off Bethesda so much that they don't get a review copy of Elder Scrolls VI or that they don't get a copy of whatever the next upcoming Wolfenstein game is. They, they want to keep it in a good spotlight with them, which is why they typically float around eights or nines, just to keep everyone happy. Because the reality is a lot of people read reviews and give people ad revenue off of reviews, even if they don't actually end up buying the game based on that review. So the thing that happened, all of that said, all of that said, it took me like 10 minutes to get here. All of that said, IGN reviewed the game after having the, the game um, for uh, a very short period of time. And they were talking about the PC version. Now, the big comparison, we can actually probably Dishonored 2. I want to pull this up as well. Can I do that? Maybe. Let me see if I can get it to work. I want to just see uh, their Dishonored 2 because the, this review that they did for um, Prey was specifically for the PC version. Now, the reason that's important is because Dishonored 2 had a horrendous PC port. So much so that, like I said, I had to return it and many other people had to return it as well. It was not a good port. I want to find their PC review of Prey um or, or of dishonored here we go right here right here now little no i don't want to play the video review let me share this so this is their dishonored 2 review we'll go full screen on this um it was nominated for ign's 2016 game of the year award they reviewed it on ps4 xbox one and pc they went through all of this. The game had horrendous glitches, in some cases uh, even game breaking, um, to the point where you couldn't load it. Does this continue? Of course it continues. Of course it continues. I just want to see what they gave it. They gave it a 9.3, calling it amazing. Now, in all of this, they barely mention, if you read this whole thing, they barely mention technical issues um, at all. Like, it's kind of baffling that they barely offer any mention of uh, the, the technical issues. They talk about running it with a GTX 1070, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, Arcane's auto settings were around very high slash ultra, and he said he would cruise along at 60 FPS. The reality is the average consumer was seeing horrendous frame drops, crashing, save corruptions, all of that. It was really bad. PC, Prey on PC had the same issues. Um... However, an IGN player ran into these issues and was not too happy about it. And the game had corrupted save files to the point where he contacted Arcane, said, this game is broken. They said, no, no, it's okay. They provided him with a brand new install of the game and provided save files at the same point he was before the game corrupted itself. And it did it again. It corrupted itself again. Um, that's a weird picture. Uh, so they reviewed it and gave it a four. A four out of ten. Like, wow. Um, they, it took them five days, to, or six days, I suppose. The Prey released on the fifth. They got codes on the fourth. And uh, so they spent a good six days going through it on PC. And 
they gave it a four. Now, previously, as I said, Dishonored 2 had game-breaking bugs and glitches as well that were fairly prominent on release. They were patched out, certainly, as I'm sure they will be with Prey, but they were weirdly willing to overlook it and forgive them uh, for it. And I think this is a, a new trend for Bethesda titles because all of a sudden there's no reason to be extra lenient. They're getting, IGN is getting the code at the same time as Joe Schmo. Uh, YouTube or whatever. So there's no reason for them to give them extra uh, bumps in their, their scores. And I think after Dishonored 2 launched, they were like, oh, well, we have no reason to be extra lenient. The game broke. We give it a four. So they're actually playing hardball and uh, following their own policies. And I'm glad to see that because as we switch to the Witcher 3 gameplay that I have, come on, there you go. Um, as is fairly typical most of these studios or most of these uh gaming publications they always buffer up uh, and kind of inflate the scores because they want to stay on the developer's good side because they want something in return and it's kind of this this unspoken bond or deal that you have with the developer that okay i won't be too harsh you just keep sending me stuff now there's no reason to do it they they're a massive game uh, publication IGN like 8 million subscribers on YouTube they know if they request a, a copy of the game they have to get one they they will get one and uh, no matter what Arcane wants to do or Bethesda wants to do they can't keep it away from them if IGN comes out and says yeah Bethesda didn't give us a copy of the game um, because they didn't like our coverage that's a big deal a lot of people wouldn't buy the game uh, as a result of that. And so I'm glad to see this. Some people were like, oh, but I enjoyed Prey or Prey is a good game. I, I didn't have any crashes, whatever. Um, but this is the thing you're paying. Uh, what, an, what a review is fundamentally is an opinion piece. You're looking at what the reviewer thought of the game. And uh, that's, that's all it is. He, they will give it a random number or not a random number they'll give it a number um, that's representative of their experience with the game and when you find a reviewer that you like you like them because they have views and opinions that are representative of what you think as well or what you would also like so if you and i uh like the witcher 3 for instance then uh, I will provide a review on another open world RPG that's narrative based, whatever, and we will likely have similar opinions, in which case my review would be more appropriate than a guy that hates narrative RPGs and says The Witcher 3 is terrible as a result of that, which is why it's all opinion based. So um, I have no problem. Dan Stapleton reviewed Prey on PC, gave it a four. Now, he was not the only one. Um, as you can see here... Let me scroll up to the top real quick. We'll go back to The Witcher. Don't worry. Um, GameSpot, same same dealio. I watched the video review. They gave it a six, which translates to fair on their scoring system. Let me scroll or zoom in on this so you can see it. Um, so they said, yeah, it's good design in some cases combat can become satisfying as the game goes on space stations are a nice change of pace but the story feels thin lack of memorable characters early game is a grind obnoxious audio design and quests are mostly uninspired six zero forgiveness zero leeway and i'm not people are it's like this came out of nowhere and it's because we're all so used to these these publications playing basically light ball they, they just no hardball softball let's just toss it back and forth yeah we'll have a good time we'll put on some floaties and an extra thick helmet we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings we want to play it safe but now that there's nothing they're gaining they have no reason to play that game with these developers and so they're not and uh, i hope it forces bethesda to change their policy and start putting these games out um, or review codes out early, not because I'm going to get those review codes, but because it's a sign that they're trying to rush these games out and uh, basically try to sneak glitches in a bad port or something past players. And that's really, really uh, frustrating. Um, I personally, from what I've played in Prey, I've not played a lot. 
uh, honestly, the more I play of it, the more it actually makes me a little motion sick. I don't know why. It might just be I'm playing on a 1070 Founders Edition, which flies. It's so great. But my eyes, I don't think, are adjusted to the crazy high frame rates I'm getting. And so it actually is like so realistic to me that I'm not used to it. So I have to actually get used to the incredible gaming experience that uh, the PC brings me. How uh, much of a humble brag is that, right? Yeah, you have permission to boo me in the chat. I'll forgive you if you do. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it's it's going to be a, 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 I think once I get used to it, it'll be okay. But I want to know what you guys are thinking in the chat. I kind of went on a ramble there, but I want to know what you think as well. Uh, of Prey, do you think these reviews are fair? Personally, my estimation would be that the 6 is probably a little closer to uh, what I've experienced so far. It, having played and done, like, tried uh, Dishonored 2, for instance, uh, Prey doesn't really seem to do anything new or revolutionary. It seems to be kind of same old, same old. Um, I just keep thinking of Bioshock Infinite, and Bioshock Infinite, in terms of gameplay, was not an amazing title, but it was at least interesting and engaging prey just kind of leaves me wishing that I played more battle or more, uh, Bioshock infinite. And I, it makes me wonder when the next one's coming out, which we could talk about that. If you wanted me to talk about Bioshock infinite, I'd be okay with that. Um, because there's some interesting stuff around the development of that game that not a lot of people realize. I guess I'll just start talking about it while I wait for you guys to, to let me know, um, about, uh, prey and what you think of prey. Bioshock Infinite, it's a game that actually did really well. A lot of people really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it. A lot of people did. And it was, I mean, the, the initial ports, the launch was pretty good. Um, the gameplay was fun enough. It was good. Combat wasn't anything amazing, but it served its purpose and you had a good time. But the game actually lost huge sums of money massive sums of money. And it was kind of weird. People were like, how did you lose all this money? The game sold well, like millions of copies. It was all over the place. Everyone was talking about it. it. People that weren't even into gaming were buying it just because the setting and the story and the narrative was so unique and interesting. And it's actually because the guy that headed up development, I forget his name. If you know it, put it in the chat. I'd really appreciate it. Um, but he actually has a history of being a bit of a perfectionist and he went through and apparently during the course of development restarted basically from scratch three times. They were developing the game and scrapped everything a good three times. Like, wow. That no wonder. Because basically you're trying to make up for three games development on the sales of one game. And even if that game is incredible, that's still a hard thing to do. So uh, Bioshock apparently was so damaged by that loss that a lot of upper level management people are saying, eh, well, we lost a lot of money on the other one. Yeah, it sold a lot, but it costs so much to make. Yeah, it costs a lot to make because you had a perfectionist kind of weirdo dude get in there. Um, and uh, restart on development a bunch. No wonder it lost money. So they need a more, I, I don't know. It, it's dangerous though, because if you get more of a manager and less of a creative type, you end up with Apple in the 90s. Whereas if you have just a creative type, you have Apple in the late 80s, where they're releasing like the equivalent in modern, uh, of modern day money, about a $20,000 Lisa computer, because he wanted, Steve Jobs wanted all the best hardware but he didn't understand that no one would buy that because it was so insanely expensive. Um, so they brought in managers to manage it, but the problem is they had no vision. And so they just created a bunch of, uh, like they brought in Sully, whatever, uh, something Sully. And he, um, actually Mike Sully, something like that. I don't know, but he was a CEO for Pepsi previously did well there, but then he started working for Apple in the nineties and he ran it into the ground because Apple had no vision anymore. Steve jobs was gone. So you have to get this balance. You have to have a mature visionary run your creative process or whatever. Um, and then you end up with a game that's really successful. That was budgeted well, managed well, but also had the creative side to it, such as Apple in the early two thousands and mid two thousands even up to today, I would say less so after Steve Jobs passed away, but that's just me. I used to be an Apple fanboy, and then I got uh, 
a Galaxy S5, and I very quickly realized that Apple is not very good. <laughs> and uh, so then I, I used my, uh, my Note 5 for ages, and then I got a Note 7 twice, went through two whole like processes of, of taking it to Best Buy, having them put it in a metal case because it was prone to explosions, carry it off. They hand me a replacement. And then I, I did that twice. And then they completely recalled all of them. And I got the Pixel XL and I'm waiting to get the next note because it was the greatest phone I've ever had. But that's about it. That's about it. Let's see what you guys are saying. I gave you guys enough time to uh, to get some stuff in the chat. Viewer participation. I'm seeing a lot of people say um, that uh, the like. Do you want to hear a joke? IGN reviews. Um, yeah, no, that's that's fairly accurate. Destro fifty seven hundred says six out of ten is somewhat understandable for their criticism, but IGN said more good things than bad and gave it a four. Um, IGN, yeah, they worded it weird. I, the GameSpot review actually was really surprising to me because they were going through and he said, yeah, it's uninspired. It's same old, same old. Like, there are some glitches I encountered where it ruined my save files and I had to go to a previous save. But, um, you know, it's still really fun. Still really good. Six. I was like, what? Oh, okay. Okay. I think it's just poor writing and communication of it. But with IGN specifically, I think it was just, they were like, the game broke. Tough luck. If the game breaks, it gets a bad rating. You know, it ran for the majority, which is why we're not giving it a one or a two, which uh, is, is, I think, probably fair. I don't know if they're going to change that once the game gets patched or if they're just leaving it there to kind of spite Bethesda. I'm kind of okay with both, to be honest. Um, not Gaming says PC Master Race. PC Master Race. Uh, Lisa McGram says, I can relate. I just got the exact same video card and experienced the same thing. I'm, I, I'm assuming you're talking about the, the kind of star, or, uh, startling um, kind of improvement with frame rates where it actually does make a big difference. If you've been playing a lot of Bloodborne on the PS4 and you're stuck at 30 FPS and then you jump up and you're in the hundreds or like upper or... or lower hundreds then you're like whoa this is like on a new level it's hard you can't explain it you have to experience it yourself to understand it if you've never played on like a 144 hertz monitor i highly recommend it but it's something that you like it takes you back it's kind of shocking it's like seeing a 4k tv for the first time and you're like is this like a glowing painting no it's just a tv it's it's kind of incredible um but it's tough to to manage uh jonas or jonas uh vest void vest void vest void that's a cool name um i says ign has become a joke overall kind of kind of they're not helping themselves out uh, this review might be their first attempt at getting uh, their reputation back. I don't know if it'll work. They got to keep this up with all the reviews they go on from now on, uh, or they do from now on. Tough thing is they have to keep a good rep with like Ubisoft or EA. Those publishers publish a lot of games and um, they have better review policies, but we'll just have to see as the next few games come out, uh, see how they manage it. Um, uh, from hell says or from hell says four out of ten is perhaps a little overcompensator or compensatory yeah it's overcompensation given the supposed rarity of the bug um i would say so but like i said it it's i mean i'm sure the bug is rare but as i said it's uh, an opinion piece so if the guy that was reviewing it had a broken game he's just saying the game was bad for me because it was broken um Let's see. Neat Sarah says, I am planning to buy Bioshock Infinite. Should I? It depends on how much you're paying for it. I think you can get it on sale for like $15, depending on where you're at. Definitely for that. Yeah. I'd probably go 20, 25 bucks. I had a great time with it. You'll easily get 13, 14 hours out of it. And uh, they're all really fun. It's pretty well paced. Um, let's see. Daniel Shuyu says, at Lukey Poo, can you mention the thing about Alan Wake? Yes. This was mentioned in the Discord, actually. Um, I can pull it up. Here we go. Let me find it. Um, so Alan Wake. Who's familiar with Alan Wake? Alan Wake, the game. How many people? I want to know. Whoops, I, I messed that up. Mess that up. I'm also going to paste a straw poll in the chat right now. And I want you guys to respond and let me know. Do you think... 
the prey reviews are fair. Um, that's that's all that that that's asking. I'm I'm really interested to see, hear what you guys think. Um, so Alan Wake, Alan Wake. Here we go. Here we go. Talk like Chris Hansen. Here we go. So Alan Wake is a video game by Remedy Entertainment. Um, by kind of published through Microsoft Game Studios. Is this the right one? I think so. This is the right one, right? Psychological thriller. I think so. Um, anyway, but it's uh, apparently a really fun game. I've never played it. People seem to really, really enjoy it. It's got a lot of influences from, like, as you can see here, uh, a scene from The Shining with the axe going through the door set at the uh, Stanley Hotel in Colorado, or inspired at the Stanley Hotel Um written by Stephen King. And uh, I live in Colorado, if you don't know that, Colorado in the US. I have been to the Stanley. Super nice there. Holy crap. I actually asked them about wedding packages, like how much it's to have a wedding there. Tens of thousands of dollars for the starting package. But you get to have a wedding in this massive hotel where that's apparently haunted. So it's it's kind of cool. It would be fun. Um, but it's apparently really, really cool. But the big uh, scandal, apparently, if I can find it, uh, discontinuation. Due to expiring music licenses, all digital and retail versions of Alan Wake and its DLC are scheduled to be pulled from purchases from the various storefronts as of May 15th, 2017. Though Remedy offered a large discount in the days prior to removal, the removal will not affect those who already own the game, nor does this impact Alan Wake's American Nightmare. That's a little sad. You have to uh, admit that that's a little bit of a bummer. A little bit of a bummer that music, uh, like policies, uh, expiring music licenses is causing a game to be uh, discontinued. That's really heartbreaking, but that's what you get. Um, when you aren't really forward looking with your, uh, licensing initially, this game launched in 2010, May 14th in the EU, um, North America on the 18th of May, 2010, and in Australia on the 20th of May. And then it launched on windows in February and early March of 2012. So a good two years later, but it came nonetheless and some people really like it. So when this news broke that they were discontinuing it, so you couldn't buy it, it was a little heartbreaking, which is why you gotta, you gotta buy it. It's the 12th right now. It's being discontinued. So if you want that game, it looks interesting. Buy it, buy it right now. Um, cause they, they can't take it away from you once you've bought it. Uh, it's your commodity once that's happened. But, um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my story. Um, so as for the Prey reviews, are they fair? This is what we're seeing right now. I think it got lost in the chat. But to those of you who saw it, thank you for quickly voting. We see... Come here. Come here. Are these Prey reviews fair? Yes. Six votes. Harambe. Six votes. And no at two votes. So... Um, yeah, having Harambe in the results will skew uh, will skew the results, but you know we have to remember, <laughs> never forget. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I think it's for the most part fair. If the game breaks, I can't. I don't think you can say that you're surprised your game got a crap, got a crap uh, score. Um, and this it brings up another thing about reviews. Developers know. Developers know about these huge glitches. Um, save states being corrupted. That's something that you notice in QA fairly quickly. You're talking about both IGN, GameSpot, and probably three YouTubers I've I listened to all having the same bug. Either they're all incredibly unlucky or it's actually fairly common. And I my guess is that it's, it's fairly common. Um... And that means that they launched the game knowing that these save state glitches were there. And they still, to this day, have not fixed it, even though the game launched uh, a week ago today. So that stands to tell me that they were aware that they couldn't fix it, didn't know how, didn't know what was causing it. 
and they they had the gall to release it anyways that's a little frustrating that's a little frustrating um to say the very least um daniel shuyu by the way says alan wake will be 90 percent off tomorrow uh, i'm assuming that's on steam or wherever it's sold uh, for the pc i'm assuming um and uh, so yeah maybe get that just to flip a, a birdie to the music companies i don't know what songs they would have in there but um some games that are kind of surprise smash hits they don't look forward in their music policy so they sign like a five-year contract which in this case i guess they did seven years or maybe five years when it came to the pc that probably makes more sense um and they they just thought oh we'll we'll have sold all the copies of the games or the overwhelming 99.9 percent .9 of copies will be sold by you know uh, five years from now um so who cares if it gets banned but either way it's a, still a bit of a bummer uh, but yeah, so that's that's what we're looking at in terms of reviews. Um, as to how I re uh, approach reviews right now, I've been given a few copies of games, and by a few I mean literally about three, from developers. They're all smaller developers, indie studios that were like, hey, check out this game. They gave me a link and uh, or a code to it, and I think two out of the three were in early access. And I said, if I get around to playing them, I will. And I'll talk about it on the channel if I enjoy it, but can't guarantee any positive or negative coverage, of course. it's I'll just have to see. They said, we absolutely understand. Have fun. And that's, I think, how you should do it. Um, I Part of me deep down thinks that it's just a bad idea to accept free copies of games to review. Part of me just doesn't like the idea of review codes because inherently you are no matter how unbiased you are or how little f's you give you are always going to be in the back of your head thinking i have to be oh, at least nice enough that i don't tick off the company so much that they don't give me another copy of their next game that they're publishing and so you end up with this kind of oligopoly or oligopoly yeah, oligopoly, um, that's run by these big publishers and you don't want to tick off any of them because then word gets out that you're mean to these games and you don't get any stuff. Nintendo runs that same way, where if you're mean to one of their games or if you mention their YouTube policies, they will never send you a review copy or a copy of their uh, um, console or anything just because you were mean. And I think that that's inherently anti-consumer. So part of me says... If I'm going to recommend something, it only makes sense that I have some skin in the game to say I paid for this with my own money and uh, this is how I, I'm going to say it. I don't know how to do that because it's this weird balancing act where you have to have an early copy of the game to stand out or to at least compete in the review uh, process uh, with some of the bigger guys. And so maybe the solution is if I get like a review code from Ubisoft for the next Assassin's Creed game, if that were to happen, then maybe I buy a, a copy of the game um, and then like sign it and send it to a viewer. That way I still have bought a copy of the game. So I have at least theoretically some skin in the game. I don't know how to deal with that. Um, my guess is that's how I would approach it. But I can guarantee you right now, I will never review a game um with the intent of trying to to keep it on their good side or whatever if they choose if if the publisher if ea says no we're never sending you a copy of any of our games ever again you have to buy it on day one like the average consumer and you'll just have to review it then so be it so be it if my review goes out a week after a release or two weeks after that's the price I pay. At least I will know, and you will know, most importantly, you will know that I'm not bought and paid for, and I'm telling you the the truth and my honest opinion. Um, and I think that's all we can, that's all we can really say. Um, as for uh, bought and paid reviews, um, yeah, no, the Breath of the Wild was something that was a little shocking and a little interesting, because there are parts of Breath of the Wild that are insanely, insanely bad. Like, how did this game get released? I'm going to pull up Metacritic right now. We're going to look at, at those. Um, the Legend of Zelda. It's the top recommended one on Google. 
<laughs> look at that. Um, but let me let me pull this up. We're gonna look at it. Some people are saying they get distracted by The Witcher. I don't blame you. I do too. For hours at a time. Um, so this is what we're looking at. Breath of the Wild is in some times, some parts of it are elements of some of the best uh, moments in gaming I've had in the last few years. So good. The exploration, the world design is so incredibly well done. It's hard to fathom how they managed it. But again, with these reviewers for Destructoid, V Games, Games Radar, the Sydney Morning Herald, Switch Brazil, Nintendo World Report, all of these places, they're getting early copies of the game. And as a result, they have to stay on Nintendo's good side. So what do they do? They give it really good reviews so that they get an early copy. Not to mention, it's not even just about early copies of the game. It's about not getting copyright claimed. I had to upload my Zelda review and change. I literally had to go through my Zelda review, the long-winded one, and the video where I talked about how Zelda uh, did something amazing. I had to go through and color code and, and color grade the footage of the intro sequence. I had to like, undersaturate it and then also increase the clarity so that YouTube's automatic video claiming and copyright ID system wouldn't see that sequence in the same way because the colors changed and it views it as a different image. I had to do that for all those shots just to keep it from getting copyright claimed and shut down by Nintendo because in the past I've been critical of them. That's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with like uh, just insanity on Nintendo's part. And that's what these guys are trying to keep up. The Destructor gives it 100. In my eyes, 100 is for a genre redefining, amazing, jaw droppingly, uh, awe inspiring, nearly perfect game, if not absolutely perfect. Uh, the Witcher 3, I love that game. Wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10. I wouldn't. I, there's some serious problems. The combat is probably foremost among them. It's It's got a lot of issues. Um, the uh, Breath of the Wild, also some major issues. Again, combat. It's so heavily dependent on gear that uh, many times it just turns into a game that's not about skill. It's about have you collected enough stuff. Other elements of the game... Um, really like some of the side quests are really dull uh they tend to trade a lot of um like well-written plot lines for quirky characters which some people love i'm kind of uh meh towards it and um other sequences like it uses uh its graphic style to kind of cover up some uh sort of hardware deficiencies and uh, it's got some real even still it will chug in frame rate if you're in any sort of forest or heavily vegetated area when you're in docked mode. And uh, it's really frustrating. Handheld, is, I've never really noticed much of anything. But in docked mode, it's got some real issues. Just because of that, 97, 95, probably closer to right. And that's what it ends up being on average. Um, and the user score... About the same. Some of these negative ones are a little are a little uh, ridiculous, saying it's the worst game ever made and all this. Clearly, they've never play it, uh, played it. Um, <laughs> really bad game. Poor story. Many bugs and glitches. They should work on this game at least one more year, and then it will be good, I suppose. Suppose misspelled. Um, like, some of those user scores are a little fagazy. My new favorite word, fagazy. Use that in my Breath of the Wild uh, review as well. Uh Chael Sonnen used it. I think it's boss or uh, Brooklyn slang for strange. It was great. Iron Rod nine one was nine one one says loved your stream last night. Thank you for turning out. We were on Twitch actually playing The Witcher three. Um, it was my girlfriend was also here, and we had a good time. Uh, we played for like two hours and we went through a lot of it. It was super fun. It was super fun. Another reason to follow me on Twitter at Luke Stevens TV and uh, join the Discord um, so you get notified of all that. Or follow me directly on Twitch, Lukey Poo TV. Follow me right there. Get the app on your phone. You will always get notified. You can even set it to um, notify you with a pop up notification when you uh, go, when I go live. And it's great. It's great. I just got a notification from Patreon. Daniel Shuyu just pledged to help continue this show. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, you are in the chat, actually. He just said, 
Fugazi. Uh, I, I agree. Fugazi. Um, so thank you. Thank you for uh, donating. It really does help. And when I say that, it really does. After the YouTube ad strikes, I made the month after that, I made 2% of what I did the month before the ad change on YouTube. 2%. Imagine taking, uh, like you're at your job, you're doing your work, you're doing the same work in February as you did in March, or in March, no, in April, as you did in March, there we go. You're doing the same exact work, same quality of work, but in, uh, say, March, you were paid $100 for this amount of work. In April, you were paid $2 for that same amount of work. That's what happened to me on YouTube. So the patrons are, are wonderful and really, really help out, um, honestly and truly. So I really am thankful to all of you who choose to do that. Um, yeah, I will update the uh, description. Uh, but if you are looking at supporting, there's the Patreon link. Um, no pressure, but it does really help. You guys get early access. If you are a patron right now, you actually have access to my early, uh, to my long-winded Outlast 2 review, which will probably go up in the next couple of days. Um, so you get early access to a lot of videos as well. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of cool. But with all that said, wow, time is flying by. Time is flying by. Bye. We're having a great time. Um, Rosinante? Rosinante Don Quixote. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, in the chat says, do you stream regularly on Twitch? I haven't in the past, but I'm trying to get more into it because I really do enjoy it. It's fun. It allows me to be more social when I'm playing games. I'm working on a very big Witcher 3 video. Um, that in its current estimated state will be about two, two and a half hours long. I am going to probably need to cut that down and trim it because it's, it's just going to, it's such a big project as of right now. I'm probably going to end up breaking it up into a few different videos or maybe not. I'm not sure, but we'll see. We'll see. Nonetheless, um, uh, we'll try either which way, but uh, as a result, I need to play through the game probably two or three times and playing through on Twitch is much more engaging than it would be otherwise. So I really enjoy that. And, um, so yeah, Twitch, we're going to try to, to get on there. Um, uh, Spartan Kitty Games says, if I donate the highest tier, can you play Roblox? Roblox, uh, I'm not actually familiar. I'm not actually familiar. I'm going to Google it right now, guys. Let's see. What is Roblox? What is Roblox? World's largest social platform for play, online game. Um, wait, let me pull this up. Let me get this. Here, come here, come here, come here. Screen share. This is Roblox, powering imagination. What is Roblox? It's the best place to imagine with friends. The largest user-generated online gaming platform. Over 15 million games created by users. Roblox is number one gaming site for kids, teens, comscore. Uh, every day, virtual explorers come to Roblox to create adventures, play games, role play, and learn with their friends in a family immersive 3D environment. I've never heard of this before, but it looks kind of cool. Looks like something my little brother would really like. Hmm. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, Dodo is asking about pranks in the hood. Uh, he's in the, over on, on the discord. He's been asking me to do some pranks in the hood. Uh, probably cause I'm so white. I think I'd blend in a little too well there. I think I'd blend in a little too well. Uh, cause I'm such a gangsta. As you know. Um, yeah. When in doubt, Howler's Moon says, when in doubt, Google, you're dang right. You're dang right. Hmm. PEM Dynamite says, Luke, have you played the latest Dark Souls 3 DLC? The final boss is one of the best of the series. That's what I've heard. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the Ringed City DLC. I have not uh, finished it. I started, actually, our streams started doing uh, Bloodborne. We did some Bloodborne uh, playthroughs and uh, gameplay. We got through the first like four bosses without dying to them uh, at all. And we did all that in like an hour, hour and a half. We rushed through it. Borderline speed ran. It was great. I had a great time. Um, but that kind of urged me to go back and do some of uh, Bloodborne's DLC on New Game Plus with a horribly leveled character. Like... 
so bad. So bad. I don't know what I was doing. I leveled up like vitality and strength to crazy levels and then also leveled up arcane to like 30 or 40 um, when I didn't need to. And so my skill is down at like 16 or 17 on New Game Plus level, uh, like a level 120 character or something. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, Jonas asks, Lukey, uh, have you tried out the Gwent beta yet? Uh, somebody did send me a copy of, uh, like a copy code for the beta and I really enjoyed it. Actually. I really enjoyed it. I, I was never huge into the game in the Witcher three, uh, standalone, but I kind of enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was fun. I thought, I thought it was fun. Uh, Liam Shaw asks, come on, give us a Cribs vid. <laughs> um, a Cribs vid, it would be a little boring, but actually I'm going to be rebuilding my PC. Um, of course, I have the 1070 already, but everything else is basically going to get replaced. I'm giving, uh, well, selling this current guy with an R9 380 to a friend of mine. Um, and then I'm going to be getting uh, an updating my my current rig um probably switching to intel just because adobe's systems tend to run a little better with uh i7s compared to like fx series chips and ryzen i'm a little impatient um so i could go with a ryzen build but uh it's a little too early to tell there's some weird like anomalies with with ryzen they'll probably get fixed with patches and with uh, updates to firmware but i'm not sure um, yeah, Luke roasting people. Liam Shaw says he could get behind that. Me roasting people could be fun. It could be really fun. I, I can get mean. I'm, I'm just saying I can get mean when I want to be. And it's kind of bad. It's probably a really bad thing. But when I want to, like, if you tick me off uh, with something you do on YouTube or with a gaming policy, watch my Mass Effect review. I'm going to put this in the chat right now. Mass Effect critique rather it's kind of a, of a review but i went in much more detail than a typical review would go i it was my first real attempt at really scripting something out i'm going to put it in the the chat here um and uh whoops that's not going to work that's not going to work that's going to take to the edited page i don't know why it does that um nope go here but it was my first real attempt at doing a really carefully scripted uh and carefully thought out video and i think it came together really well and i'm really proud of it here it is in the chat right there i highly recommend you watch it if you haven't um pretty proud of it pretty proud of it but in that i roasted a lot of the game and some people really enjoyed it but it could be fun it could be fun to do more of that um but uh, yeah we're we're running out of time daniel shuyu says he loved that uh mass effect video i i'm really glad to hear it because i really enjoyed making it it was a lot of work but it was pretty rewarding and uh i would love to do more of those for more games the tough thing is just figuring out what games to do that for i was gonna do it for outlast 2 but outlast 2 videos on the channel haven't done super well so it's hard to tell what I should cover and what I should do those for. I was going to do it for the legend of Zelda, but then like Joseph Anderson put out an amazing two hour long video that did it in way more detail, probably better. So I just decided to, to not bother. Um, the other videos that have done pretty well on the channel, of course, Assassin's Creed has done pretty well. So maybe I should go back and do a, a focused critique of Unity it, with all of its patches as a game, not as a technical thing. Um, and of Syndicate, that could also be really fun in preparation for the new game. Uh, and of course, games uh, like The Witcher 3, people are always really interested in. Um, but that's that brings up another thing. Like It's, it's kind of tough to um, figure out what should come next on the channel. It's really actually kind of frustrating because I have a few groups, a few large demographics of people, and this is something that's fairly common for YouTubers to have to balance, but there is, um, there is a lot of things that, and a lot of moving parts to it. I have a lot of Witcher fans, a lot of CD Projekt Red fans. I have a lot of Bloodborne fans. It came from the big Bloodborne video I had. I have a lot of fans of uh, Assassin's Creed, obviously. A fair number of you started watching after those. And I have a fair number also of um, slightly other, like, s sort of um, 
I don't know what, how to like what group specifically they would fit into, but they like, like the podcasts, for instance, um, they really enjoy those. And so with that said, I have to try to figure out what games and what I can do, what content I can create that will make everyone happy that everyone will watch and enjoy the, uh, and I have to try to keep all those happy and balanced at all. And one of the ways I've been trying to do that is with some live streams of types of games that I think people would enjoy um, to go through and to do these types of thing. Uh, and I want viewers like, for instance, Liam Shaw in the chat. He says, I watch everything because I value your opinion. Thank you, Liam Shaw. And that's what I'm trying to cultivate. I want to get to the point where people will watch practically everything. But it's tough to figure out how to make that happen. Because we're at 16,000 or so subscribers right now. And uh, it's fairly common to get about 10% of your viewer base to watch, on average, your videos. And that's, if you do the math, that works out about right. The average video, I would say, if you take each video I produce, take the average, you would get about 2,000 or so views per video that's released um, after about a week. Some videos do better, much better. Some do videos do worse. And it's tough to get that balance, but that's, I think, perhaps it's just part of uh, having a, a YouTube channel. Maybe that's just part of, of what we have here. Maybe that's just part of it. <laughs> oh... Um, from hell says looking at the Witcher three footage again, just reminds me how far ahead of the pack it is. It really did set the bar crazy high, like weirdly high where it's kind of baffling to think that this game came out two years ago, like almost two years ago on the nose. Um, and yet after all this, it's, it's still, uh, so good after all this time, it's still really, really impressive. Uh, we were playing it on the stream last night on the PS4, and it looks amazing. 30 FPS was a bit of a jar, but it was incredible. And um, that's that's something that is really, it stands out, especially when you compare it to a game like Mass Effect or other RPGs that have released since then, Fallout 4. RPGs that claim that they could offer what it did and nothing has ever come close. And uh, I would love to be proven wrong and that something comes uh, uh, you know comes around that's jaw-droppingly amazing that's just incredible. But so far nothing has come to that level. Um Long Liver Rock XD says Luki what do you think about Shadow of War? We will cover that. It looks interesting. Um I enjoyed the first the first game, uh, but it's hard to tell how it'll turn out. The game doesn't look that different from the original, um, so we'll just we'll have to see. But it looks interesting. Lisa McGram asks, "How did your finals go?" Thank you for uh, thank you for asking. I had finals. There's a little glitch on the Witcher, <laughs> the door. Um, I had finals this past week, Monday. Wow, yeah, Monday. This past Monday was my last final. It was the last thing, not last nail in the coffin. And it went well. It went pretty well. Finished strong. All A's or B's. Uh, micro Econ was my worst class. I think we finished with like an 86 in there. And uh, I, I kind of forgive myself a little bit on that because the teacher got steadily worse. Worse. Microeconomics, small rant here. Microeconomics is about like two parties interacting with each other. It's about very, very small scale. Macroecon is for like fiscal monetary policy. But no, we're, we're dealing with like really, really small scale stuff. But no, they chose, my teacher chose to go and to cover things like uh, environmental policy and how you had to govern pollution properly in the government. And I asked him, like, this is a macroeconomic policy. This is federal government. This isn't a micro. Like, micro is dealing with, like, dead weight loss between a, a small transaction between two parties. This isn't a microeconomic issue. But he also taught an environmental science class, and so he wanted to talk about it because that's his dealio, and it was really frustrating. So I'm kind of, um, kind of, forgiving myself a little bit for that five by nine asks do you think days gone has potential hell yes but i'm very skeptical about that uh, demonstration they gave at e3 if you haven't seen it look it up on youtube now i've used it in footage in the past i think i used uh, the footage for days gone in my video on how uh sony should compete 
with Nintendo and how they could, how I think they could pull it off. Let me see if I can find that video real quick. Um, here it is. I think I actually used that footage of Days Gone in this video. Yes, I did. Um, so I'll share this in the chat right now. Here we go. But, oh, the quality of that footage is weird. I don't know what happened there. It's in the end now. <laughs> it's in the past now. But, uh, yeah, no, that, that game was looks really good. But with the, the amount of things they had going on on screen, I will hold my breath to see if they can pull that off on launch. Um, let's see. Uh, and we'll finish with just a couple more questions. Just a couple more questions. Um... A commenter or a commenter. There you go. 271. Took I had to say it out loud. Asks, I just hope that Cyberpunk 2077 ties the Witcher's quality. I hope it doesn't suffer from the hype. Oh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Every game like this does. But we it's important to just remember that you can't expect too much from a company that's only ever really done one game really, really well. The Witcher 2, pretty good. The Witcher 1, not very good at all. Um you can get it for like five bucks at Target. It's like the PC version. It's really bad. The controls are so horrendous. It's just bad. But CD Projekt Red has only ever done one game really, really well. I would personally argue that even Bethesda Game Studios has only ever done one game really, really well. And I get a lot of flack for that. I'll probably get some dislikes on this video for saying that. But Skyrim, I think, is really the only game Bethesda Game Studios has put out in the last 20 years that's been significantly impressive. Uh, Oblivion, Morrowind, nah, nah, nah. Um, and uh, perhaps for that genre at that particular time, you could say that they did something impressive. But I think there were other games uh, at that time that were far more impressive. Um, whether you're talking about Oblivion or you're talking about Morrowind, I think there were other games that were more impressive. Um, so with that, you just have to remember that if a company has only one or two big hits, they are capable of faltering. We saw that with Fallout 4, big falter. Uh, they lost and forgot why Skyrim was so successful. And... As a result, you know, they, they ran into some trouble. And I think CD Projekt Red has the potential to do that. They just can't get cocky and rest on their laurels, um, which is very, very uh, possible. Very possible. And uh, we'll finish with this last question. I don't recognize this guy, so he might be new in the chat. Glad to have you. Uh, Amar Shai. Shai? 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 I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, S-H-A-E-I. Um, Amar asks, do you think Assassin's Creed Empire will be good? It's hard. It's hard to tell. I really hope so. I hope so, so bad and so hard. But you just can never tell with Ubisoft. They take a year off. It could be a pile of garbage. It could be the greatest game ever made. I don't know. But I really hope so. I really hope so. If any Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 2 has the potential to blow everyone away and to be uh, redefining and save the franchise, it's this one. But they could screw it up. They've screwed up games in the past that had that potential too. Unity was their first game on the new uh, consoles and on next-gen hardware. Really messed that up. So you never know. They might totally butcher it. But we'll finish there. Uh, my throat's getting real sore. So we'll finish there. But thank you all to uh, everyone who turned out. I really appreciate you guys coming out um, and watching. And it really does mean a lot to me. Again, if you want to support me on Patreon, that really helps. The show is tough to manage. And uh, takes the channel in general takes a lot of time. And I am, after all, a broke college student. And so anything helps. Um, plus, you get free and early access to the videos. So you know, you get a little something from it. It's, it's a win-win. Um, also follow me on the discord, join the discord. I will post a link in the chat right now. It'll be in the description after this, um, is uploaded so you can join in and, uh, do it that way. Here we go. There it is. Join. If you haven't already, we have a great, great time. And uh, follow me on Twitter at Luke Stevens TV, on Twitch at Lukey Poo TV. And uh, yeah, go team. Go team. We had a great time. PEM Dynamite, thanks for turning out. See you next week. Dodo, get some sleep. 
Uh, it's late wherever you are. I keep forgetting. I'm so sorry. I'm a bad person. Um, Tim the Enchanter, thanks for coming out. He says he binge watches a lot of my videos while playing. Really great quality. Thank you so much, Tim the Enchanter. It's, uh, we're, we had a good time. We had a good time. See you, Earth Defender. See you, Long Liver Rock. We had a great time. Thank you to all everyone who turned out live if you're watching this afterwards. Thank you for watching. If you watch the entire thing, you are a scholar and a saint. I love you all. Peace out.